Hello everybody and welcome again to the LD7669 channel. Today I'm just going to do a quick rundown on uh, Play on Linux. Uh, of course with Linux having so many distributions there's a lot of uh, uh, justification and ideas on what is the best version of Linux to run for Play on Linux. I would suggest Ubuntu 1404 because it has the best setup for it. Uh, basically, you are going to make sure. Oh, wrong panel. You are going to have to make sure that you set up a uh, Wine, which you can go to the Ubuntu Software Center, type in Wine. Wine is available right here and right here. Uh, I guess this one would probably be the best one to download. Uh, make sure you get the 32 bit libraries if you don't know how to install those. Uh, there should be plenty of information available through Wine Headquarters, which is just winehq.org. This site has everything you need to know about Wine and how to get the latest version. After that, you want to make sure that you get Play on Linux. The latest version is available at playonlinux.com and you can download for multiple versions and distributions. You can build your own source code if you so desire, although I don't recommend it. Uh, you could go through Ubuntu, which is the best, I think, uh, also as well as the other distributions. And uh, for Ubuntu, you just click on it and the Debian file is right here and it's up to 4.24. You just click on it, save the file, and then once you have the file, you just go to your downloads folder and you open it up and install it from there with the Ubuntu Software Center, which you can also type in Play on Linux. And there is a version right here. You can also just go ahead and uh, install right from there. However, just remember it will be an older version so the best bet is to download from their site and then use that and install it from there. Uh, let's see what else. Once you have it set up you can click on play on Linux, go to install, click on games and you have a full uh, listing of everything that play on Linux has for games that you have purchased. Remember, these games are not all free of charge. Some of them uh, do require a disc. Actually, I recommend that you, excuse me, have a disc. Uh, that way you can uh, assuredly get it to work. Um, if for some reason you do not have a disc, you can always go ahead and install it um, from uh, a digital download. But of course, there's no guarantee it will work, hence the red coloration. And it will tell you uh, basically, you know, this is a testing and it may or may not work. Uh, you can install non listed programs. Again, they may or may not work. Uh, so if you're unsure of anything, go here and go to your Wine headquarters. And let's say, for instance, you want to install Shogun Total War 2 which I have uh, installed on my desktop and once you have that usually the first hit is the best bet and from there you choose your version uh, the closest you can get anyways try to use the specific wine version that always seems to run best and for ratings I like to go with bronze or above if it says garbage there's basically no way you could probably get it to work unless you are a, a god at uh, programming with wine. Also describes potential bugs that the game has and uh, also ways to get around them. Uh, let's see, you can take your time and research all of the stuff and uh, that's pretty much I think the majority of what you can do with that. Now if you have a game and you want to configure it, you choose the game. Uh, I like to choose the the Steam uh, icon. Click on configure. From here you can add the wine version by clicking on this little plus. It'll show you the available wine versions and the installed wine versions you currently have. When I click on it and I choose this, it'll add it to the installed. Remember this is 32-bit, this is 64-bit. Now as you notice there is not much in the 64-bit folder. That's because Certain games were built a little while back and are more 
akin to the 32-bit. Most people recommend they're going 32-bit for uh, for wine, but if the game is brand new, uh, you're more likely to want to use the 64-bit. Now, if there is any other things you have to set up, uh, you can set up a new shortcut for it. You can put in debug flags if you know what that's about. Arguments. Here you can configure the wine and it takes just a moment for it to load and it should pop up for us and from here you can go through and put in your overrides basically things that need to be set up for it to work you can also enable a virtual desktop which I do recommend for certain games you want a virtual desktop otherwise it will not work uh, capture the mouse is always a good idea otherwise your mouse won't work properly I've never used desktop integration, so I don't recommend it. Uh, this tells you the version of Wine. This isn't very useful unless uh, you need to uh, specifically augment your audio. Drives you don't need to mess with. Uh, applications, this is useful here. If for some reason your Windows version has to be set up a certain way, XP, 2000, Vista, it's all here. Um, let's see, what else? I I think that's pretty much it for that. I'm going to cancel. Registry editor, if you know how to do it, you can reboot. This is sometimes useful if you do a lot of stuff to the program and need to repair the drive. Uh, this will uninstall the version of Wine. You can kill processes, look at the Windows Task Manager, and even a command prompt. Uh, this is for installing libraries, which can prove useful. Display, you can set up your graphics display. And miscellaneous is for running executable files, opening shells, and opening the program directories. Mouse warp overdrive, or excuse me, override if you so need it, and any commands to execute before running the program. Now, given all that stuff, how easy is it to run this? Well, it took me a little bit of time to set up Mass Effect 2, but I'll go ahead and show you how this works. We'll go ahead and run it just so you get a taste. Um, once everything is set up properly, and since it's a Steam game, it's got to download and upload Steam, which takes not long at all. It'll take less than half a minute, perhaps. And it'll probably, yep, crash. Just cancel that and let it continue to the thing. Sometimes Play on Linux will complain and whine, but the game still works fine. Uh, go ahead and close out this. Go to your library. Go to Mass Effect 2, choose play, choose play, choose play, and we'll minimize that. And we should, within a short amount of time, have our game. And as you can see, it works great. Uh, just so you know, not all games will run uh, and emulate in the Linux environment, so if you do really have loads of trouble with getting a game to work, uh, you might want to have a dual boot, which would be Linux on one hard drive and, uh, uh, excuse me, Windows on the other. I recommend Windows 7. Seems to be the most stable. Uh, I hit resume from where I was, and then our game should load. Now, given the fact that this is emulated, uh, a Windows game in a Linux environment, there might be some slight variances. You might notice a change in speed, um, you might notice a change in various other things, but as you can see, the game runs great. I can go through and complete my missions in Mass Effect 2. Uh, I'm not going to go into great detail with the gameplay other than just, you know, uh, giving you a taste of uh, what it's about. And uh, it's a lot of fun to be able to set things up in Wine. We're going to go ahead and exit this. Yep. And uh, it will automatically close up most of the stuff. Uh, you might want to manually do it if it doesn't work properly. Uh, it, Linux, you know, tends to like old school games a little bit more than the newer school games. But there's no saying that you can't do it given the proper background research and, uh, you know, just taking the time to study it. Um, other than that, uh, I appreciate you all for watching this video, and there will be more to come in due time. Thank you.